this is normal resistor and this is network resistor as you can see and those are ceramic capacitors this is a fuse as you can see with zero ohm so this is inductor diode ic this is the reference for the motherboard if you want for example to buy a new motherboard or if you want to look for the schematic of the motherboard you should use this as you can see mb means motherboard for every ic you will find a reference so this is the reference for this chip for this ic if you have a bad ic or chip you should replace it with another with the same reference for every ic in the motherboard it is surrounded by many ceramic capacitors as you can see this is ceramic capacitor if you find a shorter capacitor means the ic is shorted you should replace it or you can check the heat using your finger if the heat of the ic is not normal if the ic is very hot means it is failed i will show you right now how you can check the ic by checking the ceramic capacitor around it always one side of ceramic capacitor are connected to the ground if you find a ceramic capacitor that is connected to the ground in both sides means there is a short circuit here so first we should select the buzzer option or the continuity option and then press the power button so let's first check the continuity so the continuity is seated correctly so let's put the black probe in the ground everywhere in this motherboard let's check the ceramic capacitors hi i'm going to teach you everything you will need to become a pro on tablet repairing you're going to learn tablet motherboard architecture you're going also to learn all electronic symbols that is used in tablet motherboard i'm going to teach you how to diagnose any motherboard step by step you're going also to learn the common fault of tablet i'm going to teach you how to test and check motherboard components like ic's mosfets capacitors diodes resistors inductors etc i'm going also to teach you many tips tricks and secrets that will make you a pro in motherboard repairing the tablet architecture so as you can see here this is the first tablet that we're going to see as you can see we have here the tablet motherboard so this is the tablet motherboard and over here this is the battery okay so we find 
the main or the major part in every tablet is the tablet motherboard, the battery, and of course, the screen. This tablet has a broken screen. This is just the only problem in this tablet. Okay? Of course, we're going to discuss and to study many kind of tablet motherboards in order to go deeper into understanding tablet repairing. Okay? So, as you can see here, this is the motherboard. Okay? And over here, we have connectors. Usually, you will find connectors in this side in the up of each motherboard okay then we have the inside connectors as you can see the connector for the camera the rear camera as you can see and this also for and this for the touch screen okay so we have here the sim card as you can see and under this cover as you can see we have the processor the ram and the bios okay so i will show you this in another motherboard as you can see for example we have another motherboard with the same working principle always or usually you will find motherboard in the shape as you can see in the shape as you can see also for this the same also for this okay so here as you can see this is the processor as you can see here let's check the type of this processor as you can see this is a dual core processor okay and over here this is the ram the random access memory always near to the processor here we have the bios okay this is the shape for the bios i see we have here four gigabyte usually you will find in tablet a bias with four gigabyte as you can see here we have four gigabyte we have another motherboard with four gigabyte as you can see we have also this as you can see here with four gigabyte okay usually you will find that the bios i see in the tablet motherboards is four gigabyte in size okay so this is the processor this is a dual core processor as you see the a23 okay usually in tablets they use the a23 processor as you can see also here i will show you another tablet as you see here we have e23 processor e23 processor okay and here for this tablet we have as you see the a20 processor okay so here we have the processor this is the ram okay here we have the bios as you can see here this is the camera and this is the connector of camera here we have the lead this is an ic over here as you can see this is another ic here we have here another ic okay so here this is the big chips the processor and the ram are the big chips in every tablet and of course the bios the bios all so and here we have the ICs as you can see here we have other component like inductors like ceramic capacitor diode transistor resistors etc we have some switches okay and of course connectors etc okay and in the other side as you can see we have here connectors okay this is the power connector the power jack this is the usb connector here we have for the audio audio connector here we have for the external memory card here this is for power as you can see we have here plus this is power jack you can use this or even this and here we have switches for the volume and for the power okay so let's see this motherboard also as you can see here this is the processor as you can see also this is a dual core processor so here this is the memory here we have another place that is an empty place for the memory here we have the bios with four gigabytes okay here this is inductors okay those are inductors here we have pf or ceramic capacitors okay these are ceramic capacitors 
okay here of course we have ICs as you can see so this is ICs we have here as you can see other inductors this is serum capacitor this is diodes okay transistors here we have connector for the the screen okay and of course here we have other connectors so as you see in the other side we have connectors as you can see so this is just an overview or the architecture of the laptop or tablet motherboard so let's check this tablet also so so i'm going to teach you about four tablets motherboard or five tablet motherboard in order to go deeper into understanding motherboard okay as you can see here also so this is a motherboard always the same always with the same shape as you can see here so here as you can see this is the processor okay here we have the ram as you can see here we have some ic's we have here another ic this is this sim card okay so we have here some component like inductors transistors ceramic capacitors as you can see here this is another inductor as you see this is the connector for the screen as you can see here of course here we have the mic as you can see here as you see with two wires okay and the speaker of course this this is for speaker and this is wire always you will find the reference as you see here we have mic here we have the speaker okay as you can see here and this is the antenna for the gsm as you can see always you will find in the motherboard some references and some writing okay here for example we have v bat plus and v bat minus so this is the battery this is the plus of the battery and this is the minus of the battery exactly like like as we have in this motherboard this is the battery always the red wire is for plus as you see the positive and the minus is for and the black connected to the minus as you can see here we have antenna here this is antenna as you can see it goes here okay and in this motherboard as you can see we have here gsm the same antenna okay antenna or gsm is the same okay so for this motherboard as you can see also we have the the processor and here we have two rams okay two rams in some motherboard you can find just one chip ram as you can see here for example for this we have just one chip but for this we have here two rams as you can see okay this is the processor here we have of course some ICs as you can see this is the BIOS inductors diodes chemical capacitors as you can see so here this this and this are crystal oscillator as you can see this is crystal oscillator okay here we have another ic we have inductors this is connectors okay so for the tablet architecture we find always the processor or the central processing unit and the random access memory and the ROM or the BIOS, the basic input output system that contains a program inside it. Okay, so the BIOS, as you can see here, contain a program inside it. This program is the responsible for configuring or for booting the tablet when you press the power button, as we call it, post or power on self test so the bios the first time when you press the power button the bios will check all components in the motherboard will do a self test for the whole motherboard and then will start booting the tablet okay how to diagnose a tablet motherboard okay so let's check for example this motherboard as you can see so the first thing is to do a visual inspection for the whole motherboard okay you should do a visual inspection before starting diagnosing the motherboard do first a visual inspection okay because by doing a visual inspection you can find a bad component or a burned IC or chips etc okay so visual inspection also for the connectors as you can see you can check the connectors whether 
the connectors are not connected correctly or not okay so for example for this motherboard as you can see here we have this connector the audio connector do you see this is a damaged connector a burned connector so by doing a vasian inspection because this connector right now can be the cause that make this motherboard a dead motherboard okay so as you can see this connector is damaged means the pins inside it can be shorted or can be connected to each other and then the motherboard can be shorted and then a dead motherboard okay so always you should do a vasial inspection then after the vasial inspection for example for this motherboard all connectors and ICs and chips and compounds seems to be good as you can see then when the all compounds are good you can then check the component one by one but the first thing to check is the power jack as you can see the power jack should be checked you should check inside the power jack as you can see because this part inside the power jack is a very important part if this part is broken or bad as you can see here then you should replace the whole power jack if you find that this part is good inside it then you should check the soldering here these pins over here you should check the soldering okay so if you find that the soldering is bad you should make another solder Okay, so the power jack is the first thing to check. Second, you should check the connectors, as you can see. For example, the USB connectors. You should check its pins, because if a USB connector is broken, or you have here a bended pins or a connected pins, a damaged USB connector, it can be the cause of a dead laptop motherboard. Okay, because when, for example, a ground is connected with, with a high pin or the data minus and data plus are connected, this problem can cause the CPU failure. Okay, so that's why you should check this connector also, the audio connector, etc. As you can see here, we have the example here. The audio connector is broken, is damaged, is burned out, as you can see okay so this connector should be replaced first before go ahead and check in other component because this connector can be the cause of the failure for this model okay so the first step as i told to you is a vasial inspection okay a vasial inspection is the first step then checking the power jack inside the power jack and the soldering of the power jack then you can check other components especially ICs as you can see like IC so how can we check the IC easy so when you plug the power as you can see if you have a bad IC you will feel that IC is hot okay so when you plug the power, try to check the heat of the ICs. You will find that the bad IC will be very hot. Okay? Will be a very hot. Okay? So there is another way or another method to check the serviceability of ICs is by checking the PF or the ceramic capacitors around the IC. If you find a ceramic capacitor that is shorted to the ground in both sides means the IC is bad. I will show you how using the multimeter. <clears throat> so let's check this IC for example. So the first thing is to put the multimeter to the buzzer option as you can see. Okay. Now the multimeter is seated to the buzzer option and then uh, press the power button okay so let's check the continuity 
so the continuity is seated correctly so now we can check this IC to confirm and to be sure that the IC is good as I told to you you can check its heat if the heat of the IC is increased is not is not normal then the IC is bad or you can check these capacitors around the IC you should not find a shorted capacitor I mean semi capacitor all these capacitors as you can see so let's put the black probe in the ground as you can see here we have the ground the ground is everywhere in the motherboard as you can see so this is the ground everywhere in the motherboard also here we have ground also here you can find ground here somewhere here okay so now the black probe is in the ground this all this ceramic capacitor, capacitor should be connected to the ground in just one terminal one side not the both side so let's check so this PF capacitor is connected to the ground in this side so here should not be connected to the ground as you see this also in this side here in the other side no no this also the same so maybe here yeah it is connected to the ground in this terminal but in this terminal not if you find a ceramic capacitor that is connected to the ground in both side means what means maybe the PF or the ceramic capacitor is failed itself or the IC is failed but about 90% the failed component is the IC okay so because the ceramic capacitor is connected to the ground in one side and to the IC in the other side so when the IC is shorted the ceramic capacitor will be shorted in the both side okay so we can even check with other ceramic capacitor for example this two this check so here we have a ground here we should not get a continuity as you can see for this also the same as you can see for those also the same working principle as you can see this part now here to the ground here here we have a problem let's check okay let's check again so let's check yeah, it is connected to the ground in this side, but in this side not. So maybe I touch this, I touch this part also because this chemical capacitor is connected to the ground in this side, as you see, and this one in this side. So in this side, no. Okay, so good. All this, let's check this also. As you can see, one side, okay, this side, no, this side, okay. So this IC is good because all PF capacitors are not shorted now the battery so how can we check whether the battery is good or not okay so to check the serviceability of the battery you should check the power of the battery without without plugging the power okay you should check the power between the, these two terminals of the battery. As you can see, we have BAT plus and BAT minus. So if we check the voltage, we should find about, we should find a voltage. Normally, the maximum voltage of the battery is 3.7, but we will not find 3.7. Maybe you can, we can find 3 volt. Even if the battery is empty, you should find 3 volt or 2.9 volt or 2.8 volt, no problem. But if you find 0 volt while testing or checking the battery, means the battery is failed, is expired. You should replace it. So let's check using the multimeter. So as you can see here, we have 3.7 volt. This is the maximum voltage. So let's check the multimeter. Here we have the DC voltage. Here we have 2 and here we have 20. So we should select 20 volt. Why? Because we should select the voltage in the multimeter that is greater 
than the voltage of the battery. We should not select 2 volts, no, 20 volts. So now let's check, let's check the battery. So let's put the black probe in the minus terminal of the battery, as you can see. So let's check the black probe of the multimeter in the minus terminal of the battery and put the red one in the plus. As you can see, we have zero in the multimeter. Means this battery is bad, it expires. So the battery should be replaced, even if the battery looks like a new battery, but we don't have here no power, means the battery should be replaced. Show you how you troubleshoot a short. If you have a short circuit in the motherboard, but you don't know where exactly the short circuit, I will show you a circuit that you can use during troubleshooting and repairing that will help you find the short easily. Okay? So the circuit is the inductors as you can see. So the inductors in every motherboard is never, you will never find an inductor that is connected to the ground. Okay, I will show you the, in the schematic. So do you see, for example, here we have an inductor. Okay, do you see this inductor? It is connected, as you can see, connected to the IC. As you see, this is just an, an example. And here, as you can see, the inductor is connected, as you see, the inductor here is connected to the 5 volt, as you can see, to the power rail, okay? And as you can see here also, we have inductor here, as you see, that is connected to the power rail, as you can see. So, you will never find an inductor that is connected to the ground. So, the in inductor here is connected to the ground via a chemical capacitor, and here via a ceramic capacitor. So, if you check between the inductor and the ground, if you find a short circuit or a continuity, a low resistance or a buzzer using the multimeter means there is a short circuit in the motherboard. Maybe in the ceramic capacitor or chemical capacitor or MOSFET as you can see, etc. So let's check right now this motherboard. So first we should put the black probe in the ground. Here we have the ground everywhere in the motherboard. Okay. So, and then check all inductors. This is the first inductor. Let's check it. As you can see, we don't have any buzzer, any low resistance. Means here we don't have short circuit. Here, no short circuit. As you can see, let's check this also. This, we have no short circuit here. So, let's check this also. The circuit, this is inductor. As you can see, no short circuit here. So, to look for a short in the motherboard, okay, in every motherboard, in the tablet motherboard or the laptop motherboard, cell phone motherboard, just use inductors. If you find, for example, this inductor is connected to the ground, means the power rail in the circuit is connected to the ground, means here we have a short. But the short is not in the inductor. Inductor is just a sign that we have a short. Short, maybe in the IC, maybe in one capacitor here, or diode, okay? Or MOSFET, okay? For every IC in the motherboard, it is surrounded by many components, exactly by many ceramic capacitors, as you can see. This is ceramic capacitor. The question here is, how can we check the serviceability of this IC? Because we have here a lot of pins. You can check this, the serviceability of this IC using terminals. You can check the PF capacitors around it. If you find a shorted capacitor, means the IC is shorted. You should replace it. Or you can check the heat using your finger. If the heat of the IC is not normal, if the IC is very hot, means it is failed. I will show you right now how you can check the IC by checking the ceramic capacitor around it. As you can see, for example, if you look to this IC, this is just an example. Okay, so as you can see, here we have some PF or ceramic capacitors, always one 
side of ceramic capacitor are connected to the ground and the other side as you can see is connected to the IC as you can see okay here also as you can see we have a ceramic capacitor and even a chemical capacitor in in both side here in this side capacitors are connected to the ground and in the other are connected as you can see to the IC so let's see another IC so as you can see here we have a ceramic capacitor in the pin number two it is connected to the ground and in the pin number one is connected as you can see to VTTRF to this to the IC the same for this as you can see it is connected to the ground here but in the other pin is connected to VN of the IC let's see this two also these two also are connected to the ground as you can see in the sides but in the other sides are connected as you can see to the IC this mean what this mean if you find a shorted ceramic capacitor means a ceramic capacitor that is connected also to the ground in this side means this IC is short maybe the ceramic capacitor can be shorted but 90 or 99 percent the IC is the shortest component I will show you in the motherboard how to check the IC and the ceramic capacitor using the multimeter so now we're going to check this IC using the multimeter we will check this IC by checking the ceramic capacitors around it so the role is the ceramic capacitor should be connected to the ground in just one side not in both sides if you find a ceramic capacitor that is connected to the ground in both sides means there is a short circuit here the short circuit can be here with 90 percent so first we should select the buzzer option or the continuity option and then press the power button so let's first check the continuity so the continuity is seated correctly so let's put the black probe in the ground everywhere in this motherboard so here we have ground as you can see here we have ground everywhere in the motherboard as you can see so now let's check the ceramic capacitors so let's begin with this for example these two here the ceramic capacitor is connected to ground and here no so good for this it is connected to the ground in the side in the side now so let's check this also in the side now in the side yes good now yes now yes okay here now yes connected here to the IC here to the ground here here to the ground here should not be connected to the ground the same for this as you can see here it is connected to the ground in the side now for this also here connected to the ground in the side now etc you can also check the PF capacitor using the probe if you hear a buzzer or you get a continuity means there is a short circuit in this in the circuit maybe the serum capacitor or maybe the ice but in my experience 90 percent or 95 percent or even 99 percent the cause of the short circuit in the motherboard is the ICs okay so if you find a shorted ceramic capacitor means the IC is shorted you can even check it using your finger just plug the power here in the power jack and check the IC using your finger if you feel that the IC is hot means 100 percent the ic is bad you should replace it with another ic with the same reference okay with the same reference okay so if you find a shorted ceramic capacitor like this means the ic should be replaced okay the common fault 
in the tablet motherboard. So the first fault that you will get as a technician, a repairing technician in the tablet motherboard is the power jack connector. As you can see, this connector can be broken, as you can see, because if you use this wrong, you can break the connector. Okay, so you can get a damaged connector because here inside we have this connector inside it this connector can be damaged or you can even get a bad soldering connector so if you get a bad or a damaged connector you should replace the connector the whole connector but if you get just a good connector you should check the soldering you can remake the soldering and the connector will be working work it fine okay so the first fault is disconnect okay second the battery the battery can be failed or can be expired as you can see here this is the battery terminals as you can see we have here the red wire and the black wire always after you use the tablet for many years the battery can be damaged or can be failed so for example this for this battery even if this battery looks new battery but this is a failed battery you know why because if we check this pins i will show you using the multimeter how you can check the battery so we have here the multimeter as you can see so let's put the selector to as you can see to 20 volts okay to 20 volt and then press the power button okay to 20 volts because the battery we have 3.7 in the battery okay and here we have 2 and 20 so we should choose greater than 3.7 so the greater value here in the multimeter in the multimeter is 20 volt okay so let's check these pins as you can see the terminals of the battery as you can see the plus and the minus so let's check the battery right now so let's check it here we have minus as you can see and here we have plus what we get in the multimeter zero means this is a bad battery because the battery even if the tablet battery is empty you have zero percent in the battery you should not get a zero volt here no you should not get a zero volt maybe you can get 2.7 or even 3 volt but zero volt means this is a failed battery okay but sometimes you can just find that the connection of the battery is bad you should make another solder here okay you can uh, also the antenna can be desoldered desoldered the antenna as you can see here the same also for the speaker always when you troubleshoot a motherboard or a tablet motherboard you should check this solder okay for the mic as you can see this is speaker as you can see here we have speak this is speaker okay so those are for speaker and here we have the mic here over here we have mic okay over here we have mic as you can see okay so also you can check this connection always sometimes when you open a tablet you find that this this is not locked correctly so you should check also these connectors okay the same for the connectors for the camera also and this connector also for the touch screen okay also you can find ic the ic can be broken or can, can be damaged so you can just by plugging here the usb cable or the power you can you can check the heat of the IC. If you find that the heat of the IC is not normal, if the heat is increased, 
to ice is hot means to ice is bad or you can check the uh, ceramic capacitor around the IC as I told to you also sometimes the seam slot can be damaged then you should check these pins if one of these pins is broken the seam can be failed also you should check here the soldering of these pins and also these pins as you see we have his seam this is the same slot the same also for this for the tf slot you should check its solder of course the connection or connection over here okay then also we can get sometimes fails like usb connector fails okay usb if these pins are failed you can get a usb connector failure okay or even the audio connector i will show you an audio connector that is burned out as you can see this audio connector do you see this this is a burned out audio connector as you can see so this is the cause of failure for this motherboard as you can see this is burned out okay so always you should check all connectors in the motherboard okay of course there is another failure that can be happen in tablet motherboard is the bios the bios as you can see can be damaged the ic can be damaged itself but 90 percent the ic cannot be damaged the program inside the ic can be corrupted so if for example you get a motherboard that is good all its component and good you check the component you check the battery you check uh, the connectors you check also all components and ICs and connectors and you find all hardware are good so the problem can be in the BIOS you should reprogram the BIOS or flash the BIOS again because the program inside the BIOS is corrupted okay so let's see the motherboard components of the tablet so as you can see here this is the tablet here we have the motherboard this is the battery this is the tablet motherboard as you can see here we have the processor as you can see dl core this is the ram chip here we have the bios this is ic's as you can see all these are ic's integrated circuit these are inductors this is ceramic capacitor or pf capacitors these are diodes here we have resistors as you can see these are transistors this is crystal or quartz as you can see the reference of the crystal always you can find x or y as you can see here this is crystal we have here x5 here we have another crystal as you can see x2 you can find also crystal with the letter y as you can see this is crystal y2 here as you can see here y3 okay so always do a reference for the crystal is y or x okay here as you can see we have resistor this is normal resistor and this is network resistor so this is normal resistor and this is network resistor as you can see and those are ceramic capacitors this is a fuse as you can see with zero ohm Okay, this is a fuse so this is inductor diode IC this pads are for the mic and this is for the speaker as you see we have here speaker here we have the bat plus and the bat minus for the battery this is a flash lead this is the same slot and the TF slot this is the connector for the camera the rear camera here we have the antenna if you have a bad network or connection you should check this antenna or gsm here we have another type of inductors as you can see here those are inductors 
This is the reference for the motherboard if you want, for example, to buy a new motherboard or if you want to look for the schematic of the motherboard, you should use this. As you can see, MB means motherboard. For every IC, you will find a reference. So this is the reference for this chip, for this IC. For this also, we have reference also for this. If you have a bad IC or chip, you should replace it with another with the same reference. Here we have, as you can see, network resistors near to the screen connector with zero resistance, exactly like a fuse, okay? So if you check these resistors using the multimeter, you should get a continuity, a low resistance, and you should get a buzzer. This chip, as you can see, is the BIOS, the basic input output output system with 4 gigabytes the same also in this motherboard this is the BIOS always you can find the BIOS in the tablet motherboard near to the processor also here in this motherboard we have the BIOS near to the processor with 4 gigabytes I will show you in the next lecture all about the BIOS so the BIOS contain a program 4 gigabytes in size this program is the responsible for booting the tablet the BIOS is responsible to do a self-test so when you press the power button the program inside the BIOS will be executed and will check the all components and parts in the motherboard then if it finds that all components are good it will let the operating system to load if not it will give you an error I will show you right now some symbols okay of components that we find in the tablet motherboard okay so the symbol for the big IC as you can see for the processor for example or the RAM its circuit diagram will be like this as you can see okay when we find a rectangle like this with many squares and rectangle means this is a chip okay this is a chip and here all these are control for example you can find here for example here the clock for example okay here you can find the ground okay so this all this part in the chip is connected to the ground and here is for the clock here for example you can find usb here you can find the power management, for example. Okay, and here, for example, you can you can find the control signals. Okay, so this is the symbol or the circuit diagram of the chip in the motherboard schematic. Okay, and for the IC like this, for example, you can find it like this, a square with mini pins here okay in the far side or in both sides so this is the eyes this is the symbol for the eyes okay here as you can see we have this is crystal oscillator okay this is crystal oscillator its symbols is as you can see is like this in the schematic so this is the symbol for the crystal oscillator with x or y okay you will find always the crystal oscillator with this two liter x or y as you can see in this motherboard for example for the laptop we have here the crystal as you can see with this value as you can see the frequency here we have x5 as you can see okay and for this for example this is another crystal just this is an example this is another crystal here we have y3 okay so always the crystal oscillator okay crystal crystal oscillator crystal or quartz okay its reference is x or y okay so let's see what we have here also so we have ICs we have this this is ceramic capacitors all these are ceramic capacitors as you can see so the symbol for ceramic capacitors is simple is like this so this is the symbol for the ceramic 
capacitor as you can see with C or even PC okay this is the symbol for ceramic capacitor and for chemical capacitor this is its symbol for chemical capacitor or for, for polarized capacitor this is its symbol as you can see okay with plus here this is a polarized capacitor this is a PC or C okay so for the resistance you can find its symbol like this for the resistance R or PR okay or even this symbol as you can see with R or PR okay so for the diode okay for the diode this is the symbol for the diode as you can see this is D or you can find also PD okay or you can find the symbol also but the symbol is for the zener is for the zener diodes okay and you can find also another symbol for the diode with two around here this is led this is an led diode exactly like this one this is an led diode okay sometimes you can find a symbol as you can see like this mini resistor or a combination of resistor as you can see so this is a network resistor you can find nr or r or even pr this is a network resistor so i will show you an example of this resistor we can find this kind of resistor in the tablet motherboard Okay, but we I don't have here this resistor in this motherboard, but I will show you this resistor from another motherboard for the laptop. Okay, as you can see here, for example, this are resistors. You see. This is a network resistor, as you can see. Okay, here also, as you can see here, this is network resistor. All this a network resistor. Here we have a normal resistor, and here this is a network resistor. Okay, here this is ceramic capacitors because the tablet motherboard has the same working principle as the laptop motherboard. The difference is in the size, okay, and in the design. As you see, for for the laptop motherboard, the processor is integrated with the motherboard and also the RAM is integrated with the motherboard but in the laptop motherboard as you can see or computer motherboard this is the processor it's not integrated you can remove it and the RAM also is not integrated and of course we have the GMCH and the ICH etc okay but for the tablet motherboard all big chips okay like the processor the note bridge the graphic card etc are integrated here of course sometimes you can find an ic that is responsible for the graphic card and sometimes you can find that the graphic card controller is integrated with the processor so as you can see here this is the symbol for the network resistor so you can find of course some diodes that is co composed of two diodes okay in this shape as you can see okay this you can find this kind of diodes okay so for this symbol as you can see this symbol is for inductor l okay for inductor or for coil so inductor okay or coil so this is the symbol for inductor or coil l is for lens l okay l stands for lens okay the, the noun of the scientist i want to add that in every motherboard you will find ic's around it main component this is a very important tip when you find an ic like this as you can see an ic or a power management okay so this ic of course has many inputs for example like 
V in, for example, the working power, let's assume that the V in is 5 volts, for example, it will receive, of course, some enable signals, okay, some enable signals, and will be connected, of course, to the ground, etc. So, near to this IC, you will find many capacitors, okay, many ceramic capacitors, as you can see. Okay, so all these capacitors are connected to the ground in one side, but in the other side should not be connected to the ground. So in this side, the ceramic capacitor are connected to the ground, but in the other side are connected to the IC. So to check the serviceability of this IC, you can just check this ceramic capacitors. The ceramic capacitor should not be shorted to the ground in the both sides, okay? If you find any ceramic capacitor, okay, around any IC that is shorted to the ground in the both sides means this IC is shorted, is bad, okay? You can even check the serviceability of ICs using your finger. If you feel that the IC is hot, means it is bad. You should replace it with another IC with the same reference. Okay, of course, as I told to you before, every IC has a reference above it in its body. You should always use the reference if you want to replace the IC. Okay, we will see the ICs and the tablet component references okay so for example as you can see here for the processor as you can see we have here a23 dual car okay with this number as you see dc26aa61d7 okay so for example let's assume that in this motherboard you have a failed processor this processor is failed you should replace this processor with another processor with the same reference okay so with the same reference you should look for a processor with the same reference the same for example for the ram for example as you can see here we have this kind of ram okay lpda j a two one six P B B G. This is the reference for this RAM. If you have a failed RAM, you should replace this RAM with another RAM with the same reference. Or, for example, let's assume that you want to add another RAM here, so you should add another RAM the same as this. Okay. So, for example, this IC, as you see, we have A X P. 223 IC with a 2127 EC, okay? So this is the reference for this IC. If you have a bad IC, you should replace it with an IC with the same reference. And of course, how can you check whether the IC is good or not? By checking the PF or the ceramic capacitor around the IC. The ceramic capacitors should not be connected or shorted to the ground in the both sides. Always you will find that for this ceramic capacitor, it is connected to the ground in one side and in the other side is connected to the IC. So if you find that the ceramic capacitor is shorted in the both side, means the IC is shorted to the ground, means the IC is bad. We will see all this in detail in the next lectures. Now, let's assume, for example, that you have a failed ceramic capacitor. For example, you have this capacitor, or for example, this capacitor is bad. We don't have here any reference in this capacitor. So, you can replace this capacitor with another capacitor in the same motherboard, in another motherboard that is similar to this motherboard, okay? Or you can use the schematic and check its capacity or its characteristics so this is the symbol of the ceramic capacitor as you can see here okay do you see 
This is just simple for the ceramic capacitor. As you see, in the schematic, you will find the reference or the name of ceramic capacitor and here its capacity. As you see, 0 0.1 microfarad, 16 volt. This is just an example, okay? So, to replace a bad ceramic capacitor, as you can see here, for example, it doesn't contain a reference in its body like the IC. So, you can replace it with another ceramic capacitor from another motherboard with, that is similar to this motherboard, okay? Or you can use the schematic of the motherboard or the tablet in order to know about its size and its characteristics or you can even replace it with another ceramic capacitor with the same size and with the same color okay. same size and same color for example all this ceramic capacitor have the same characteristics why because they have same color same size as you can see here but those also is those are different from those but those will, you will find in the schematic that those capacitor are the same characteristics why because they have the same color and the same size okay so for the coil as you can see here we have here a reference we have two r2 you can this all these coils are the same as you can see so if you have a failed coil you can replace it with another coil with the same reference as you can see this we have here 100 here we have 190 okay and this we have two r2 as you see so these are the same inductors as you can see also we have two inductors with the same characteristics as you see 100 as you see the same inductor and of course we have diodes and we have resistors a small resistors as you can see here this is a resistor so normally if you don't know the characteristics of a component especially the CSMD component you can use the schematic to know about its characteristics or you can replace it with another component with the same size and same color for the ceramic capacitors now we're going to discuss the usb connector the usb connector has four terminals as you can see so i will show you the symbol the schematic of the usb connector okay so always you will find the usb connector with four terminals as you can see four terminals okay so this terminal the first terminal is always five volts okay and the second terminal is minus d means data minus okay and this is data plus okay and for this is connected to the ground always this is the schematic of the usb connector i will show you a real schematic as you can see here this is a real schematic for the usb connector as you can see here as you see we have the first pin is vcc okay the second pin is d minus or data minus here we have data plus so this is the data signal and and this is the return signal and always the fourth pin as you see we have ground okay so now let's check this usb connector using the multimeter we should always put the multimeter to the continuity option or the da to the continuity option or to the buzzer option and then press the power button so let's check this usb connector so let's so let's check the continuity first so and then let's put the black probe so let's put the black probe in the ground so here we have ground okay so let's check first let's look for the fourth pin so here this is the fourth pin as you can see here and here is the vcc so this is the first pin 
This is the second, the third, and the fourth. Always the fourth pin is connected to the ground. And here is connected to the VCC. Okay? And these two are connected directly to this chip, as you can see. If you focus here, we have buses here. From these pins, as you can see, directly to this. This is the memory. Okay? This is the memory. But this memory has also another row exactly like the chipset in the laptop motherboard so these two pins are connected directly to this memory and then to the processor okay so this is like the interface between the usb and the processor okay as you can see so this is the ground as you can see this is connected to the ground and here we have five volt and here we have data minus and data plus okay so to check the USB connector, you should always check inside the connector. This pin should be fine. If you find that the pins are damaged or are twisted or are touched, each other means you should replace the USB. The USB is failed. And also you should check the soldering here. You should check the soldering. The soldering should not should should be fine. Okay. You can also win your power. When you power the motherboard, you can also check whether you have 5 volt hand or not, okay? Now, I'm going to show you how you can check the switches, as you can see. So, how you can check the serviceability of switches in the motherboard. So, the switch in the motherboard has two pins or two terminals. One terminal is connected to the ground and the other is connected to the power rail. So let's check. Here we have the ground. We have the ground everywhere. So let's check, for example, this switch. As you can see, this pin is connected to the ground, and for this, this is not connected to the ground. Okay. So let's check right now this pin. I should plus the red probe of the multimeter in this pin, in the pin number one, as you can see, and then press the switch, as you can see. The switch is working correctly. When you press the switch, means you short between the first pin that is connected to the power rail and the second pin that is connected to the ground. Okay? The pin is good. If you press the pin and you didn't hear any buzzer or you didn't get a low resistor in the multimeter, means the switch is bad. So let's check this also. This also is good. Let's check the third one. The third one is good. Okay. So the switch also, every switch in the motherboard has two terminals, as you can see. So this terminal, the, the ter one terminal is connected to the ground. Okay. And the other terminal is connected to the power line. Okay. To the V plus. Okay. So here we have the body of the switch. If you want to check this switch you should put the black probe of the multimeter in the ground terminal okay and the red probe of the multimeter in the positive terminal or in the terminal that is connected to the power line okay then press the switch when you press the switch you will short between this pin and this okay then you will hear a buzzer in the multimeter so when you press the switch you will hear a buzzer or you will get a low resistance okay in the multimeter means the switch is good but if you press the switch and you didn't hear a buzzer and or you didn't get a low resistance means you have problem in the switch you can use this technique or this trick in every as you can here so let's check this motherboard as you can see so here we have an IC, okay? So this is our IC that we will check right now. So as you see, we have here chemical capacitor. So let's check F first, let's put the black probe to the ground. So here we have the ground, let's check. Okay, okay, here we have the ground, as you can see. We have the ground everywhere. So let's check this capacitor, the first one. It is connected to the ground in this terminal. This and this now. 
Let's check another, for example this. It is connected to the ground, but in this side should not. Yes, let's check this. In this side now, in this side, yes. So let's check this, for example. So in this side now, in this side, yes. Now, yes, okay? So this chemical capacitor and now to IC are good. Means the IC is good, okay? But if you found a ceramic capacitor that is shorted like this and give you a low resistor in the multimeter, means the IC should be replaced. Maybe the ceramic capacitor is bad, but as I told to you, 90%, 90% the IC cause the problem of ceramic shorted ceramic capacitors okay so if you want we will we can check another IC okay so for example let's check another IC here for example let's check this IC as you can see we have here another IC so the multimeter is suited correctly to the buzzer option so let's check this capacity we can do like this or we can check with the ground so let's check in this side okay in this side no in this side connected to the ground in this side no let's check this also in this side no in this side yes in this side no yes no no yes no yes no yes no yes no okay so means the IC is good okay so now I will show you a trick that you can be used to find the short in the motherboard easily so to confirm if the motherboard is shorted or not or not you can just use do inductor as you can see so this is inductor or coil we have here one inductor this is the second this is the third okay you can just check these inductors or check the ceramic capacitor as i told you, to you before around the ICs to confirm if you have a short or not because always always in every motherboard the inductor should not be connected to the ground the inductors exist in the high bus or, or in the high line of power always the inductor connected to the power not to the ground so let's check so let's check our multimeter is seated to continue with the option so let's put this in the ground here we have ground everywhere so let's check this first inductor as you can see so the inductor is not connected to the ground let's check this also as you can see now as you can see now so we don't have any short here so let's check the inductor itself so when you find that inductor is not connected to the ground means there's no short here you can even check the ceramic capacitor as i told to you before if you find a shorted ceramic capacitor means the IC is shorted okay and of course you should check the shape or the state of the motherboard because sometimes you can find a broken motherboard that's why you should check the whole motherboard as you can see here and check the soldering of all components okay and connectors also okay so here you can check the soldering this is a crystal or a quartz the soldering of all connectors also for example you can check the soldering of switches as you can see and for the all parts the soldering of all parts and also check whether the motherboard is broken or not